Hey, what is up, you sexy beast? Goes in a shit and I'm bringing you guys No End House 3. This is part of my scary story series that I do. And if you guys haven't seen No End House 1 and 2, I'll link them in the description below. You really have to watch them to get an understanding for No End House 3. Now, sadly, all of No End House 3 is not currently written yet. Uh, most of this was written last year, but there's only No End House 3 Part 1 and No End House 3 Part 2. So there should be more parts coming out soon based on the author. I don't really know, guys. I really hope he does finish the series sometime soon so I can finish it for you guys. I'm going to be reading Part 1, and then I'll be reading Part one in a few or Part 2 in a few days, and I'll be reading Part 3 when it comes out as well as Part 4, or however many parts there are because I want to finish the series just as much as you do. Really do enjoy it. Sit back, relax, and remember the fact that I love you guys. David stumbled to his car in a daze. The last couple of hours were a complete blur. Haunting images would sporadically cross over his mind, slowly reminding him of the hell he's now leaving behind. He felt in his pocket for his phone and dialed 911. There was no way he could explain any of this, but for some reason his first reaction was to call. Maybe they could just come here and confirm that it was a normal house, nothing more. They could put his mind at ease and he could go home, live a normal life with, then he remembered. The dirt under his feet had slipped around him and David tore back to the house. Maggie. Maggie was in there. As he ran, he flipped through his phone, looking for old texts he knew he sent, but there was nothing. There were texts to Maggie, but from Maggie, but all of them were blank. David swore under his breath when he reached the door. He tried the knob, but no use. With both fists, he pounded on the door, screaming Maggie's name. Nothing. His fists were red and burning, and David slumped to his knees, palms dragging down the door as he went. After a few moments, David felt his eyes sting. He had left her in there. The woman he loved went in to save him and took his place. He had to find a way in. There had to be another way in. David got to his knees with a renewed energy, but before he could move, he felt his phone vibrate. It was a text, and looking at the name gave him relief. It was Peter Terry. Maybe he could help. Hey Dave, you alright? Haven't heard from you in a while. Peter, Jesus, where... Where are you? I'm in the house. I went in to find you, man. I told you not to go. It's past now, but whatever. Peter, I just need to get back in. Do you, do you know how? Go around back. There's an oak next to the house with a trapdoor at its base. Go through there. It's a service entrance. Wait, why the fuck would there be a service entrance? Just go to the tree, man. I'm trying to help you. David didn't have time to ask any more questions. He took off running down the porch to the other end of the house, leaping over the side rail and landing in an awkward pile below. He could see the tree wasn't far, or maybe it was. It was so big, and death perception was hard to figure. And what was even there before? Yeah, he had other shit on his mind earlier, but who really takes notice of Tress? But at this one, it was massive. He ran up to the side and there was a small wooden door on the ground below it, like one of those old cellar doors houses used to have leading into their basements. David looked around him and behind his back. He wasn't even sure why he did. He just had one of those feelings. Shaking it off, David yanked on the handle. The rusted hinges groaned in protest, but after a few hard pulls, it gave way and revealed the darkness below. With a heavy sigh, David slowly made his way down. Jesus, it was dark. But soon David was hit with a smell that put the darkness to shame. It was like burnt hair covered in shit and mold. He spit onto the ground. He could fucking taste that smell. David got out his phone and turned it on its highest brightness. It wasn't much, but at least he was able to see the surrounding walls. Looking around in the dim light, David noticed something strange. He hadn't been in too many underground tunnels to be fair, but he assumed the walls would be dirt, mud, or something like that. He couldn't quite see what it was, but it wasn't anything man-made, or that could pass as dirt. Curiosity got the better of him, and with his phone outstretched, he went up to one of the side walls. He had to get close to see it, with his phone almost touching the wall. David's eyes grew wide. No, can't. With his other hand, David prodded at the wall. It gave a bit, but was solid. He was reminded of the smell, and how he knew its origin. It was flesh. The walls of the tunnel were covered in burnt skin. David moved the phone a few inches and followed the light. He saw areas where different skins were sewn together through rough metallic string, almost like copper wire. One section made his stomach turn over on itself. It was a face, a human face, stretched out and elongated, with its eyes and mouth sewn shut. The nose was removed, and the hole that was left there behind was sutured as well. Maybe it was the smell, or the sight of this, but David couldn't take it. 
With a lurch, he turned to the side and vomited on the ground. The tunnel went on for ages. What was most likely only a few minutes felt like hours for David. He had to get inside and save Maggie. Nothing else mattered. Peter was a friend of his, but if it came down to it, Maggie was the first to save. Peter could rot in there if need be. Then again, he was the one that told him about this path. David's mental debate seized after something from behind touched him. With a start, he spun around and was face to face with nothing. Confused, David brought his phone up and reached into blackness. Nothing. Nothing at all. Except a wall. A wall that wasn't there two minutes ago. Rank and covered in flesh. David screamed and pounded on the wall in front of him and it gave only slightly. The hall was shrinking, trapping him as he walked in. It hit David like a train. He was in the service tunnel, but he was in the house. It had him. There was no going back. The house was pulling him in. It was glad to see him. Earlier, this may have phased David more than it did at that moment. There, in that hell tunnel, David barely flinched. He had seen what this place was capable of, and he had witnessed some of the most sanity testing experiences imaginable. He'd seen it all, or at least he thought. As he walked, David could now hear the tunnel shrinking in from behind. The grinding, sloshing noise of flesh twisting on itself to seal him in made him feel sick again, but he only sped up his walking. After a moment, he heard something that made him stop dead in his tracks. It was a voice, a girl's, but it wasn't Maggie's. Why did you come back? Why? Why did you come back? David stood there frozen. The voice seemed to come from everywhere. Why? Why did you come back? Why? The voice was getting closer and David braced himself against a wall. Soon he heard the thudding footsteps of something running towards him. And then he saw her. A girl, no older than 13, running up to him yelling her constant question. David was too stunned to react short of just standing there. The girl ran up to him and began to pound on his chest with her fists. Hard at first, but then weakening, like a spoiled girl hitting the ground when she doesn't get her way. Why, David? Why did you come back? The girl slumped to her knees in front of him with one final hit against his leg. David stood there in shock, hands slightly raised and tense. His fear began to ease out of him. She clearly wasn't a threat and didn't seem to be a ghost or anything. Hey, he began. It's all right. Who are you? The girl jumped slightly at his words. Slowly, she lifted her head to look at David. His heart sank as he saw her face. No eyes. Absolutely no eyes. Blackness. And then she spoke. He could see inside her mouth. No tongue and no teeth. Just a void. You came to save us, didn't you? 